So this is uh, this is Ryan. He works in our lab. Okay, and Ryan. He's the guy hey. that makes the paint here, Createx. So this is kind of the the, the lab portion of, of our facility where we store everything, all our information, where our color matching system is, our data color system, and all the top secret files of all our. Oh, so all everything stuff. starts from here, from developing. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. So everything uh, is being created first, like digital formulas. Yeah, all, all, all the formulas yeah. are stored in our uh, system here. Oh, yeah. and then you create based on that yes. the actual mm -hmm. paint. Right, the actual paint. Yep. Oh, so awesome. everything, everything we kind of have like a, a starting point basically like here. Like we can do, we do Pantone color matching in certain respects, but everything has to, everything has to start somewhere. Right. And, and this, this is, is kind of where this is where that happens, and this is also where we do a lot of R and D for everything that we're. I developing or, or in development or testing and, and everything gets tested and sprayed and we have a whole battery of tests that uh, we go through before we even think about releasing something into the market you know like not only does it have to perform like what we were talking about right. it has to perform well but it also has to be stable in terms of shelf life and products you know just just how it sits in the bottle we need to know that is it going to last in you know six eight months ten months a year from wow. now you know we need to know that it's not going to fluctuate once it gets dispensed and it makes its way to a store on the shelves anywhere somebody orders it it needs to be the same in that bottle you know six eight months from now than it was you know today or tomorrow so we wow. do we do accelerated tests too just to make sure that product is, is so all those tests you guys do it here yep yeah everything's done here awesome. everything's done in-house yeah you have big responsibility here. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you want to do a color match? Or you can that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be amazing yeah. to see it. And if you can you tell us... got to close out his Amazon. He's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, like this is a... Uh, we're making a Scenix Burnt Sienna here. Okay. So, we find this is the batch code that we're making here. Okay. So, it's a 20-second batch made. Then we go in our system. Do the uh, product number, and then we, you know, just do our 20 second batch, and we scan it in. And this uh, machine here has a bunch of cameras inside. It takes like, I believe it's eight different photos of the, the drawdown that we do. Oh, really? Yep. And then it'll read it on the card here. And uh, for these colors, we are looking for a two delta E. So we're gonna have to bring that one in a little more because the, uh, the pigments we use they have different pigment strengths, so. Mm, this is like uh, putting together the formula. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Right. And, and, and this the grandma's is a drawdown this. card here that we read. Ah. So we make the batch out there. We do a six mil drawdown, scan it into our system, and match the uh, standard that's in our system. Wow. Six mil is, is the thickness. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, six mils thick. Yep. 2.6 mil. Yep, yep, yep. So we're getting a, a consistent, that's like the equivalent of basically like three to four wet coats. And this is where everything gets made awesome so they mix here yep. and yep. everything's here depends on the formula that they mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Everything gets machines. different machines do different things we have certain machines for for different purposes for, for different paints yeah. yeah so this machine here is our uh, Hockmeyer we do a lot of uh, larger batches on here like scenics and uh, thick viscosity oh wow yeah and then that's the uh, mini Hockmeyer just a smaller version of this we do smaller batches, five gallon, five to seven gallon batches. Oh, wow. Yeah. And these are our newer machines over here. These are all the Rosses. It's the same thing. These are all just a large version of it and a small version of it. It's a very uh, high shear mixer. So wow. Anything with, uh, without the pearls, we do all of our effects on these two machines here. Oh, yeah? So we don't shear the, uh, the pearl powder. The oh, powder. I see. So anything with the pigment loads will go on the back three here. Anything with the pigment in it. Wow, that's awesome. Yep. Each of these machines have like a different blade. You know, it's a different type of oh, mixing blade. Oh, it depends so on the... Yeah, right. And like, that's why like the Rosses, they're such a high tolerance machine. It actually will, like what Ryan was saying, it'll, it'll actually cut the pearl powder. So if it's if it's a large effect powder, like our Cosmics, or even uh -huh. just the regular pearls, you can't make it on that because it'll actually, it'll pulverize the pigment. Oh, like, like the, the I blade see. is actually up inside. You can, you can uh, yeah, it. yeah, it's, it's a blender. Yeah, yeah basically, yes. Yeah. Oh, I can but see. What it. happens is that, like, through that capillary action, the paint goes in through here, and if it's a larger size, this blade will actually 
cut that furrow pigment so you can't do this is such a, a tight tight tolerance machine that these are for like yeah, just anything the, with our effects are on the hot miners the other two machines too. wow yeah very cool and that's why you guys have different machines for yep. different yeah. purposes yep. different yep. blades and different yep. everything yep. like the, the the blade that's on that machine looks more like a it's almost like a circular saw blade laying uh, down and it has these little turned up edges it's got like a it's hard to describe it's like a no, circular uh, saw but it's got an edge on it whereas these I can show it here if you want to know. Oh, yeah okay he just shut that one down yeah, shut this see. one down a bit see that that's like a oh I see. so the, <laughs> so the blades blade. depends on the kind of paint, paint you're, you're making, making. Yeah. 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 wow So interesting. And you can see Ryan's Ryan's shirt was that was clean. It was all clean. This oh morning. yeah, <laughs> today that was this yeah. morning. Well, he's a hard worker. He's not other he way, is, he right? Is. Thanks so much, Ryan. No this is this over here on the wall. This is our our water filtration system. So this is everything that gets used. If we do have any kind of water that we use in the base of our paint, uh -huh. this is assuring that it is the absolute. Like I talked about, deionized water. We have right. we have positively charged, uh, completely clean, contamination-free water. Like if you drank this water, it would make you sick because it's, it's, it's stripped of all the minerals and the pH is uh, low in terms of the pH. Wow. Yeah. Okay, guys, this is, which department is this? This is the lab, right? This is basically the lab, the paint, paint manufacturing. This is actually paint manufacturing lab. Technical, this is the in the back, all our raw materials, like the totes right. uh, and everything you see on the shelf. Most of this is, these are all pigments. Over here, these are all stacks of pigments and, and different uh, additives. Essentially, all of the chemicals, uh, like the solvents are up against the wall over there. Wow. Setting the bottles to get it. Hi, I'm Danny. I put bottles on the track. <laughs> It's like it fills in by sections. In increments, yeah. So they're set for different levels to make sure everything's consistent. So it's, you can see it, they're staggered. So as it runs through each, I see. it makes sure everything is full to, to the correct amount. Wow. Then comes over here. So it runs down the belt. This is an automatic capper. So they just fill the hopper cap. They roll down here. Okay. He's just grouping the... He's just making sure the caps are tight, you know, once it rolls oh. through, make sure that, that the cap is actually doing what it's supposed to do. And then it runs through the labels, so like the labels that we saw, which we didn't oh, see yet. the rolls. Yep, you see all the rolls, so they go ahead and print the labels and they get them loaded on and it's an automatic labeling system. So this is the end of the... Pretty much, yeah. They, it comes uh, off on, uh, on, uh, and then it comes on the turntable, uh, then they get loaded into the bins, and then you basically bring it down to where I showed you earlier, which right. we didn't see on camera yet, but... Um, oh, okay. The heat shrink tunnel there. That's awesome. And right here, you guys, you can see Steve made a <laughs> Tim Gore's Tunnel of Love. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Hey, Tim. <laughs>